Hello, everyone. My name is Stephen Murray, and I'm the host of The Gift of Giving. I thank you all for joining us today. For those of you who are tuned in for the first time, this program focuses on the foundations, nonprofits, and 501c3s start, starting here in Las Vegas, Nevada, making our world a brighter and better place. This week's guests, we have Rydell Danzi, the president of the Wildlife Habitat and Improvement Nevada, and Nick Gully, the project manager of the same organization. Welcome both of you to the program. Thanks uh, for thanks for being here with us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having so, us. Here. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, very interested to hear about your organization. It sounds very unique and very, very different. So uh, let's start off. Can you give us a brief history of the organization itself and when it was founded and mm -hmm. how long it's been around? Well, when started back in the early 80s, and as you see, it's 2024 now, and we are still here. We're growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, things have been changing every decade or so, and we're keeping up with the times, and we are preparing for the future. And what it is that we like to do is to create and amplify the habitat, the true habitat for wildlife here in the state of Nevada. And what made both of you join this organization? Let's, let's start with you, Nick. What made you join it? Well, I've been living in Nevada since 1982, mm -hmm. and I've always enjoyed the outdoors. Not only was I out hunting and fishing and hiking and riding my dirt bikes, I wanted to find a way to give back. And one of the ways to give back is conservation efforts. So I found Wynn was doing some guzzler bills for bighorn sheep, which is a very important animal in our state, as we all know that. I was invited to go on a helicopter ride, go out there and do some manual construction when I was younger and in shape. And I jumped on it and fell in love with it. <laughs> and I became a police officer for about 27 and a half years. And when I retired four years ago, this became my full-time interest of volunteer for win. Gotcha. And for myself, I'm originally from Alabama, born and raised on a farm. I've always been out in the woods, hunting and fishing, uh, keeping up with the wildlife. And for me, it was a way of life. I thought everybody actually lived that way until I left home. When I was in the military, I took off and I met people from New York and I had no idea how they had survived so long. So throughout all of my travels and coming here to Nevada, I stumbled, stumbled across when and realized that they had the same core values and had the same outlook as I did in the way that I grew up. And what I did not realize was like you were talking about, Nick, the guzzler builds, they were involved in all of that. Now, being out in the wilderness, you come across that stuff and you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. But you don't realize who's the ones, who are the people that are out there putting that in, what it takes to get that in, and the impact it does have on the wildlife, especially in a desert climate. Sounds sounds good. Can I kind of uh, yes. expand on that yes. a little bit? Sure. Um, as a local Nevadan, we both know that the Nevada Department of Wildlife they have a budget they have to meet every year and deal with. Well, organizations like us assist mm -hmm. that budget when they can't come up with a piece of equipment. They will come to a nonprofit such as Win. Hey, can you help us out with that? Mm -hmm. So sometimes financially, we'll, we will kick in some money to buy a piece of equipment. But on top of it, at any time, I can reach into this phone and get 30 volunteers on a job site by Sunday. Wow. Mm -hmm. And go, That's hey, amazing. we need to build a guzzler for antelope or maybe for birds. For our bird enthusiasts, our watchers, we can go out and build benches so people have places to sit. So not only do we fund Endow and other entities with our nonprofit money, we're out there with hands in the dirt uh -huh. yes. working, and we want our families to join us, all our yeah. kids and husbands, yeah. wives, and grandparents. You're, you're literally in the trenches. Literally. We are in the trenches. <laughs> <laughs> um, in a, one of our, uh, the conversations before uh, this meeting, I thought the only wildlife was in the wildlife refuge just northeast oh, of Mount Charleston. Uh -huh. But I understand you've got projects going in Searchlight and Overton and all over the place in southern Nevada. Well, it's Wildlife Habitat Improvement of Nevada. So it's the whole entire yes, state. state. And uh, I have you're not the first person to have said that. People think when they talk about Nevada, they think Las Vegas or Reno. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the totality of all of Nevada, we're almost 90% BLM land. Yes. And that means wildlife. It's on par with Idaho, Montana, and even Alaska. Mm -hmm. And 
when people are introduced to that, when they say, oh, we're, we're just not this four miles here inside of Vegas, there are big horn sheep right over here. There's mm -hmm. elk right over here. There's, you know, rattlesnakes out here. Um, they're intrigued and they want to get out and they want to explore. And that's kind of who we are as well. We're like a gateway for those people. Gotcha. Just to clarify, you said uh, most of us is BLM. Mm -hmm. For those that don't know, we're talking about BLM, the La uh, Bureau of Land Management, yes. not Black Lives Matter. So Correct. just want to clarify that. <laughs> yes, BLM is uh, Bureau of Land, land Management. management. Yes. And uh, that's actually a good point because for us, people that are out there, we know what BLM stands for. So yes. we don't make that that accidental comparison. But when you are talking to someone who might not know, sure. who might be from New York, and you say, hey, you want to you're coming to Vegas, you want to go out and uh, do like a youth hunter uh, build or whatever it is that's on BLM land. And they're like, well, what do you mean? Yes. And so then and, that and conversation you might place. not know, not know what BLM is. Uh, you've got a nice video on your website. And I hope mm -hmm. you don't mind. Uh, with your permission, we did pinch it. We'd like to take a quick look at it. Sure thing. Please turn around. Let's have a look. Since 1992, Wildlife and Habitat Improvement of Nevada, a nonprofit sportsman and conservation organization, has been devoted to the maintenance and betterment of Nevada's wildlife populations and their habitat. One of our feature programs is Water for Wildlife, where volunteers come together to build water drinkers for wildlife to use as a resource during drought conditions. Wynn also supports the efforts of other organizations by assisting in projects or supporting financially to help with things like animal collars or helicopter rentals to aid in the relocation of animals. Your support can be in many forms, whether financially, physically, or by purchasing our gift items from our online store. Be a part of a win-win effort by becoming a member now. That's a real great clip. Mm -hmm. Real great clip that you showed there. Um, you mentioned Water for Wildlife in there. You've got a Water for Wildlife program. And could you explain a little bit about that program, what, what it actually does? Go ahead, Nick. Who's the best one there? So that's a majority of my interest is waterfall. Okay. I've been hunting Nevada and doing my conservation work since 82, mainly waterfall. Ducks, geese, shorebirds, things of that nature. I concentrate mainly on the... Uh, Key Pittman Wildlife Management Area located in Heiko, Nevada. I do bounce between uh, the Waney Kirch Wildlife Man Management Area in Sunnyside, uh, Nevada. I bounce over to Overton mm -hmm. to give them some support over there. But we have so many wildlife management areas throughout the state. Northern Nevada is probably the largest, mm -hmm. you know, wow. when it comes to waterfall. But I'm so far away, so I can only get up there two or three times a year. When it comes to our waterfall, we're doing things such as nesting boxes throughout the Paranagut Valley for wood ducks on private land. And that is all our money that we're donating to build wood duck boxes. I'm currently um, in the process of with guys that are volunteers from Win, and they brought this task to the table. We are designing four by four floating islands for future nesting of the waterfowl at Key Pittman. We're going to begin this program mm -hmm. here in the spring of 2025, but we're building the islands right now and getting all the habitat needed to grow on those islands through hydroponic grow tables where we can transition those needed elements for the successful nesting of the waterfowl. So we're doing things of that nature, but we go throughout the entire state. Gotcha. Not only that, but uh, with the goose and the wood duck nesting boxes, it creates a safe place for these animals to come in and reproduce. And then they can carry on, especially during their migration. It helps against raccoons. It helps against the bobcat. It helps against coyotes and other yeah. predators. We're going to talk about all of these different projects in the next segment because you've got several. And the goose nesting is one of them because mm -hmm. we've got a couple of pictures so we'll talk a little bit about those in in more detail uh in the next segment uh the las vegas woods and water events mm -hmm. that seems to be um a big part of your operation and i've noticed the focus on family and you mm -hmm. alluded to it just now a few moments ago um you seem to be very focused on getting family events together and bringing families together. Am I reading that correctly? Uh, that is 100% correct. I mean, if you look at history all over the world, 
there's been family units and we have gone out and procured our own meat, uh, vegetables, fruit, things of that nature. And it took the entire family to do that. And your neighbors and your extended family, that's how we ate. That's how we came together and that's how we laid our foundations to grow up and pass it on to the next kids. Mm -hmm. This does no different. So like when Nick was talking about doing guzzler builds, the kids are out there too. So instead of sending your kid to a summer camp where you're paying $300 a week, you can come out and do something like this and you're helping the state in and of itself. So it's that hands-on, the parents, especially parents that have never been out there before, they're getting something new. And for a kid to see their parent not be the be-all, end-all of what a parent is, but to see them struggling and ask questions, you're creating that safe space with that as far as learning goes. That's a very nice point to end the first segment on. Gives the viewers food for thought and gives <laughs> me food for thought too because it's a it's a whole different dimension that you're talking about. It's not just wildlife habitat mm -hmm. improvement. You're talking about family as well. And that's very nice that it's all encompassing. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back in a few seconds after we've heard a message from our sponsor, Lucia Capital Group. At Lucia Capital Group, we've been helping people manage risk and plan for their future through some of the most challenging market conditions. Volatility in the stock market will never go away. So it's really all about your strategy and how you react to it. Our bucket strategy aims to help you manage your financial goals even during the most uncertain times. I'm Joshua Dowden. I've been working with clients here for more than 16 years and I can help you as well. My office is right here in the heart of Summerlin, just north of Charleston Boulevard. Don't let the stock market determine the quality of your retirement. Call me today for a free consultation, 702-508-6421. That's 702-508-6421. Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Joshua Dowden for, from Lucia Capital Group for sponsoring this program. If you're looking for help with your 401k, Joshua's the guy to reach out to. And I'd welcome back our, program, um, our guests today, Rydell and Nick. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And we now like to talk about some of the projects you've got going. Um, you've got a wood duck project. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about that, one of you? Yeah, go ahead. You can sure. talk about wood duck and uh, the goose because it's the same kind of deal, it's just two so, different species. Correct. Okay. So like I explained earlier, uh, in the Paranica Valley uh, private land area, we had, as wind, we had installed a bunch of wood duck boxes, which helps successful nesting of wood ducks now in nevada we do not see a lot of wood ducks mm -hmm. all right so this is a way for us to maybe enhance our population our flocks of wood ducks um, we do see them throughout the paranagate valley i know they've 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 harvested a few up north when it comes to our duck and our goose nest win came out years ago with another organization and they built all these they sit about six to eight foot up, up in the air above the water they're made of wood, and it's a platform for our ducks and our geese mm -hmm. to successfully nest away from the predators. They still have to struggle with raptors that may come from above, but when mm -hmm. it comes to our raccoons and our skunks, they're up out of the water. Um, I usually begin that pro process of cleaning out uh, the duck and goose nest in about the end of March, right before our nesting season or our pairing season takes off for lack of better words. We get uh, we put new hay inside of all our duck nests and goose boxes and and let them nest. Uh, I can tell you successfully right now, I've probably got eight to 12 successful nesting pairs of geese at Key Pittman alone. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to ask you how many you've got. And we've got a picture that um, John will put up uh, on the screen behind us of uh, some guys standing in water creating mm -hmm. one of these boxes mm -hmm. yes. uh, in the water. Presumably. So uh, now how do the geese, do they just find them or the, uh, it's just do you natural. put something in there to attract their smell or something No, like it's that? just natural. They're going to so find it because they're, 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 you have to remember, they're migrating in. Mm -hmm. And so if they come in at their side and they're going to stay, they're going to look for the best place. Like if you move to another state, yeah. you're going to look for a place to buy a yeah. house. They're doing the same thing. So it's natural. For them even yes. though for us it yes. might not be natural it's something that's man-made but for them they can find it advantageous to continue mm -hmm. and survive now how do you know where to put these 
Usually uh, the waterfall lets you know. So mm -hmm. about about a week or two before what we call pairing season, you'll see where the an or the waterfall are staging, mm -hmm. where they're hanging out in the water, where they're eating, um, where they're escaping for cover from weather gotcha. or uh, predators. So we watch that. I do utilize some trail cameras to, to help me with that. There's a lot of hours on feet, hiking the trails, behind the binoculars, watching the birds. And then I get a reports from uh -huh. uh, waterfall enthusiasts, bird watchers, not only hunters, bird watchers. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just saw a Southwestern flycatcher living over here. When we had that, we had to shut down a portion of the management area to protect that species of bird. Wow. That's cool. It's really cool what you're doing. And you, you've got volunteers to, to build all these boxes. You just, you've got a mm -hmm. network and you just say, hey, we need a, one of these nesting boxes made. And you've got yes. volunteers that just go out and they create and the stilts they come out and, and they the whole help. shebang. Uh, I mean, when you're asking for vol, we don't even like to call them volunteers and we have to put a name on it, but it's people who care and it's people that want to see, hey, I'm doing something good that's going to benefit my kids and my grandkids yes. because if you build those boxes today that can be we don't even know how many successful goose are going to geese that are going to live throughout your grandkids yeah. lifetime gotcha it goes right back um, into the family organization between las vegas woods and waters and win with las vegas woods and waters every week there's an event it could be a mm -hmm. fishing event it could be an event with us mm -hmm. where we're actually doing volunteer projects such as carp rodeo mm -hmm. um so we work hand in hand with Las Vegas Woods and Waters. Well, when those families are out there in the field, they're reporting back to us. They're reporting back to NDA, mm -hmm. the Parma Wallet, to BLM. Hey, I've seen this over here. It could be a mule deer in an area that normally mule deer would not inhabit. Yeah. Yeah. So all of a sudden, there you go. There you got a study going. So scientifically, it works in their benefit to have nonprofits such as us or Las Vegas Woods and Waters to be in the field. I would. And it's not an ego thing, but I would say our volunteers probably have more hours in the field than any employee from BLM or Endow because they're either doing conservation work. They're mm -hmm. out there with their families enjoying the outdoors, mm -hmm. whether it's hiking, hunting, fishing. They're out there more than the employee because they can do that. That's nice. And Woods and Waters is not the only other entity that's out there. There are plenty of other groups uh, that focuses on whatever they are particularly focusing on, whether it could be quail, whether it could be sheep. And that's what their focus is, but then it comes in under the umbrella with us because we're doing everything, all the way up to uh, banding, dove Jeepers. banding, duck banding, goose banding, the whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, so let's move on. Uh, you've got a youth duck hunt and open and close. Who would like to talk about that? That's well, that's something that we do every. That's something that we do every year. The youth duck opener and youth closer. Uh, in Dow, uh, they put it on. There's a bunch of different people that are involved. It's probably six or eight different entities that come together to make this happen. And basically, before the beginning of a duck season, we bring youth out. Some of these people have never been. Some of them have. Their parents have never been. And we have mentors. And we have. Um, mentors for family members that might not have ever been out there. Some of these people have never seen a gun before. Uh, and we stress safety. All of the kids walk away with something to bring back home. We have goose calling contests. We have duck calling contests. Now the, um, the uh, success rate isn't that high because <laughs> <laughs> when you have an animal that's flying, you know, 40 miles an hour to a hundred miles an hour past you, you can't really like prep for that. That's just no. time. But to see a mom or a dad in a blind mm -hmm. with their kids, not thinking about anything else, not on their phone, not on their iPad, having a conversation, watching yes. that sunrise, watching that sunset, you, you can't pay for that. No, you can't. You're absolutely right. You can, those moments, you can't make them back again. No. You know, sunrise and sunset, they're all you need. Correct. So. With, with an event such as that, you have the chance as an organization to provide equipment and talent, I like mm. to call it, when it comes to our volunteers. I always mm. do an end of the meeting. We have a monthly meeting, and I talk about the talent in the room. It could be a single mom who's never been out there before, but she's a business owner. Well, she can guide this organization down a business platform to help us out. But then myself, Rydell, our other volunteers can come in with all the equipment because we own it. We have all the equipment because we've all been hunting and fishing and doing conservation work for years. It could be a screw gun to screw in a piece of wood 
at a management area to build a duck box, or it could be a shotgun that a kid's never seen before. I come from the Midwest. I grew up around shotguns my entire life. So it's natural for me. But when you have talented individuals that Woods and Waters and Wynn has in their group, they can take a child that's never seen a firearm before and safely mm -hmm. teach that child something about life when it comes to firearms, the respect. And you can't be distracted with the phones and the iPads when you have a firearm on board. So it's another advantage that we get to have passing our future generations, our information. Mm. Okay. And I think on that note, it's time to take a, another sponsorship break. Please come back with us. Introducing Pacific Coast Capital, your partner in finance. We provide financing for your business. Speed, flexibility, and creativity are the foundation of our service. We'll help you navigate through change and opportunities. Our 90 plus years of experience ensures quick turnaround on loan decisions. Ride the wave to prosperity with us. Ready for new funding. Visit our website today at PacificCoastCap.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to welcome back our guests, Rydell and Nick from uh, Wildlife Habitat Improvement Nevada organization. And I'd like to thank um, Pacific Coast Capital also for sponsoring this program. Uh, we wouldn't be able to hold it without our sponsors. So there was one other program we want to talk a little bit about was mm -hmm. the mule deer and sheep tagging. Um, who wants to talk about, about that well, one? I'll start off and we can sure. wrap it up. Because you were just at the sheep one, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, throughout the year, we work, especially with fish as well, we work with the endows biologists. And a lot of the ways, like when we get tags for the year, we get quotas. And it's, it's like, you know, you can get 120 tags or you can get 50 tags. That depends on how well the species are doing. Throughout the year, we might capture and tag or collar a certain amount of mule deer in certain areas, a certain amount of moose in certain areas, a certain amount of sheep in certain areas. And actually we just did one to where we captured about, I think it was like 25 sheep. It was a goal right. to have them transported up to Utah to help boost their herds because ours are doing so well here. And actually Nick, uh, he was there running this up. So I think that the pictures in the video you have is from him. Uh, well, we do have a picture of a mm -hmm. moose with a helicopter flying over. And what are you mm -hmm. doing with that moose? Where, where's that going? Well, actually, uh, a few years ago, a lot of people don't know that moose were here before. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of meandered off like everything else does. But then they started coming back down. A few years ago, people started finding them on their <clears> game, <throat> game cameras. People started reporting it. They started going out, Endow did, and they were tracking them. And they have gotten to a certain point now to this year, they released their first moose tags in 80 years. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. And for those of the viewers that don't know, Endow, mm -hmm. talking about the Nevada Department, Department of, of Wildlife. Wildlife. For yes. those of uh, our listeners that might not know who Endow is. Um, another big one of your projects is the cleanup. Mm. Uh, we've got a couple of photos here on on your cleanup. You've got crews that actually go around these different areas and collect trash. How often do you do that? Every build that we are involved in, whether we've brought trash in and it's our responsibility to bring it out, mm -hmm. even if it's trash that was already there, we grab our kids, especially if we work with a local um, uh, Boy Scout crew, group 130, and they go out there and they help us clean up whatever's in the area. We bring out more garbage than we create as an organization, right? And that's just by going out picking up things around the desert that was there before we got there. So cleaning up the environment is big because any animal could get caught in, let's say, um, when you buy a six-pack of soda, the yeah. plastic. Throwing yeah. that on the I ground, know. I have found many dead duck, ducklings wrapped up in that. Yes. So we got to get yeah, that off the landscape. Dangerous. So we're, it's, very, it's, it's very important when it comes to the coordination of the project on site yeah. yes it's and it's something that. it's something that we uh i think all people that enjoy wildlife like to say leave it better than you found it absolutely and um it's not necessarily your run-of-the-mill person like a bird watcher that's going out there and saying you know what i'm going to go try to find a pintail or an eagle today it's not really them it's people that are just dabbling or it's like oh we have a three-day weekend and they just don't even know. They're like, oh, somebody will pick this up because it was clean when we got here. 
And it's a lot of the education is what it is that we're lacking. And so even when we go out individually, we're picking stuff up as it is. Yes. Like this doesn't belong here and you're bringing it back in with nice. you. That's nice. Yes. Um, now, you mentioned you don't like to call your volunteers uh, volunteers. Mm -hmm. You like to think of them as talent. How many talented members do you have within the organization currently? <sighs> I'm thinking directly, we're right around the 40 mark. Yes. Indirectly, we're a few hundred when you put everybody together. And uh, like I said, we're spider webbing up to the north, up into the middle of Nevada. So that's getting even larger now as well. Well, we noticed um, one of your fundraisers, I guess you, you have several, but one of them is an annual banquet. Mm -hmm. You've got one coming up um, that you'll talk about in 2020. Uh, later this year or 2025 in uh, March but um uh we've got a picture of your last banquet uh, uh -huh. which I'll show here it looks like there was many more than 40 people there it looked yes. like there was a, a few hundred and all of those it was more than a few hundred it's actually we've grown so much that this next banquet we've had to move venues because we outgrew and we had to turn people away where we were this last last seven years we've yes, been there correct last seven years we've been to that one location and we had to turn people away this year so next year we're moving into a place that i think we're going to be right at a thousand wow thousand that should raise some coming. funds for you now now how do you get funded is it mainly from events like this and uh it's going to be like a bunch of different things but the banquet is our largest one it's our like this is it it's one night this is what we're doing and that we take that money like for instance we took a hundred thousand dollar profit from one of our banquets and turned it into seven hundred thousand dollars that went right back into converse con conversation <laughs> conservation <laughs> <laughs> so it is uh in a hundred percent of what it is that we take as far as donations go it all goes right back in we're all nobody's getting paid yeah so it's a hundred percent we're still trying to figure everything out as far as getting everything uh, done and those like bits and pieces, but that's what it is right now. Here's one um, of the biggest draws for my volunteers. When they hear this number right here, the federal government will come in and give $3 to $1 back to the Nevada Department of Wildlife for every hour they're out there. I am worth about $33 an hour as a volunteer unpaid to the Department of Wildlife. Mm -hmm. Times that times three. I did 683 hours last year as a volunteer. That's my own gas money. That's my own money out of my pocket, spending the nights in campers, in tents, in hotel rooms. All our volunteers are like that. But when they start hearing, well, our state's going to get $3 to one for me to come out. And it could be a five-year-old kid handing you a bottle mm -hmm. of water while you're out there digging. That child's getting paid financially through and to end out. His time is worth money to the state. Well, when people hear that, it's a give, give, Jeepers. right? So and that all it. goes straight right back into conversation, conversation, con conservation. I, <laughs> I can assure the viewers it is water in that cup there. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing stronger. And one um, last thing on that, when it comes to our, our banquet, when I am given a, uh, a tag for mule deer or elk from the Department of Wildlife to auction off, well, we just auctioned off the mule deer tag for 220000 225 Times that times three when the federal government comes in and pays Endow for that tag. And that goes right back into the soil, which goes into their coffers. And then we come behind that as a nonprofit and we add money to that. That's a perfect note to end this interview. <laughs> perfect note to end the interview. I thank you so much for being on this program. Uh, would you like to put out your website information so if people want to get involved and learn sure. more about it, please give us your website information. Uh, please just go to winlv.org, W-H-I-N-L-V, winlasvegas.org, and uh, you'll be able to Google it as well, and you can find any of our information there. Thank you again for being with us. Thank really you. appreciate it. Uh, Thank you for taking the time out. and wish you, you continued success. Me. You've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. Hope it continues. Thank you. thank you. And I'd also like to thank our show's producer, John Stiles, of Dub and station owner of WWDB TV for allowing me to host this program. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Lucia Capital Group and Pacific Coast Capital, and RJ Champion. You'll hear his message at the end of this program. 
If you have any questions or comments about this program, please reach out to me at stephen at thegiftofgiving.vegas. And I'd finally, last but certainly by no means least, thank you, the viewer, for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this program. If you know of any wildlife enthusiasts who would like to get involved, please share this interview with them. And I hope you'll join us again next week. In the meantime, stay safe, be kind to one another, and see you soon. Bye for now. Mr. R.J. Champion is proud to sponsor WWDB-TV's series, The Gift of Giving, and wishes the program much success. Congratulations and gratitude to the featured guests and the organizations they represent. Our community is well served by your tireless efforts to make Nevada a better state for all its residents.